So we're here at the Embedded World 2018, and who are you? I'm Reinhard Keil, I'm responsible for Embedded Tools at ARM. So I have actually started a company 30 years ago, focusing at the time on 8051. Yeah. And uh, we have been uh, sold the company in 2005 to ARM. Since then, I'm responsible yeah. for the microcontroller tools in ARM. Uh, we have um, over 5,000 microcontrollers today supported in the Kyle MDK. This is the development suite that we offer for ARM-based microcontrollers. So is this a, a you, 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 your company was about a development tools for microcontrollers, yeah. only for microcontrollers? Only for microcontrollers, so I was focusing from day number one on microcontrollers. Today our tools are used practically everywhere in the industry, starting from industrial, medical, automotive. We have all type of users. And 30 years ago, you didn't start only with the ARM, right? This no, other 30 years ago, ARM wasn't wasn't invented. Yeah? It was Kinda. at the time, it, it was 8051. Yeah. Yeah, this 8051. was the mainstream microcontroller at the time. Today, the mainstream microcontrollers are all based on ARM architecture. So we have uh, Cortex-M3, this was the infection point, uh, M0, M4. Now new security architecture, Cortex-M33. We also support Cortex-A based microcontrollers by now. Cortex-A? Cortex-A based. based Which one is that, the A5 something? They are based on A5, A7, A9, yeah, from right. NXP, but also from other vendors such as Atmel. So uh, uh, what do you think about the, the ARM microcontroller Cortex-M? Uh, it's been designed in a, in a way to be very small, uh, but also fast. Yeah, yeah. We have uh, basically from the most energy efficient microcontrollers that are Bluetooth low energy, run on a battery up to 10 years, up to high end, up to 600 megahertz Cortex M7 we find in the market today. Um, all based on the same architecture, which makes it very easy to migrate existing software across a range of of products. So how does software look like for microcontrollers? Is it simple? <coughs> no. All to uh, the point? <laughs> Today actually many uh, communication stacks and software components are used in microcontrollers. So the day where microcontroller software was easy and simple is over. And to manage complexity, we have actually um, standardized. We have software standards based around SEMSYS. This is the Cortex Microcontroller software interface standard. And we have uh, a lot of software components that work with this standard and allow you to actually simplify the development and cope with complex projects. Is it like modules, drag and drop, or not, not so, not it's, like that? It's, it's, it's almost copy like paste, that. It's, copy and paste? No, copy and paste no? this time is over. You select from a list the software mm -hmm. components. We, we can take a look at this, yeah, if you are interested. So is this, uh, this is, what this is this? basically MDK, yeah? Yeah. And you, you have here a button, and you can see a list of software components here. Yeah. And when I want to bring in a new software component, and I click basically here on this menu, so you can see what type of software is available for this device. And what do you do, you drag it in? No, you just say, I want to use DSP. Yeah. And this brings in the DSP library in this case, all you do is OK, and the DSP library is, there. is now there. Yeah. there. So yeah, here you see it in the project window, here is basically all the DSP library that I just selected. You see basically what, I can make this window a little bigger, you see here what component this belongs to. So we have also in this system RTX5, which is our real-time operating system. RTX5 Artos. Artos, yes. Did you say ARMS? This is ARMS development, so we developed that. It's now generation 5, so therefore the number 5. We have actually extended now the RTX 5 to the safety critical industry, so we have uh, safety certified it across several standards. So, uh, does that mean you have a, uh, uh, like, you compartmentize yes. like software and hardware uh, separation layers or something? Yeah, uh, what we did is the cluster. We have a so-called runtime system for microcontrollers, which gives you the 
ground up framework for complex applications. This is composed from a functional safety C library and an Autox, Autox kernel and typically also a software test library that comes with it. Yeah, so that comes, that is device specific actually. The other parts are Cortex M specific and this gives uh, programmers a starting point for safety critical applications in industrial, automotive, medical and railway. Yeah, this all just, yeah. So it's not to do with security? Safety is a different aspect. Yeah. In Germany we have one word for that, Sicherheit. So we don't differ from the language between safety and security. Safety means reliable operation. So this ensures a reliable, robust operation. In case of a failure, such a system must go into a defined safe state. Mostly it's then switched off or into a state where a backup mode. Yeah, that is basically what a safety critical system is about. So, uh, security brings in the data integrity. So with security you have actually the data aspect. That's another domain of, of the of the Sicherheit aspect, as we say in Germany. Right, uh, right here is uh, associated with the automotive uh, industry. For automotive industry, which part? Up to now, is about safety. Yeah? So the automotive industry is up till now more safety related because you want a safe car experience. Yeah, so you don't want that the car crashes, and this is safety. Security is another aspect. This means that your data are secure, that your system cannot be tampered. And this is what we are addressing with our Cortex-M33 architecture that we also are addressing. That's hardware security. That is hardware security. Trust zone. Is that, does that work inside the Kyle software? Yeah, of course. Uh, we have uh, specified a so-called platform security architecture. And we have also an implementation called Trust Zone M. And this Trust Zone M implementation gives you the ground up foundation for security on microcontroller systems. Is it strange that for the last 30 years there hasn't been uh, all these all these embedded systems have been uh, without hard uh, some of them, but not all of them had hardware security, right? Yeah, hardware security <laughs> was uh, actually introduced on the Cortex A side uh, more than a decade ago. So we have the Trust Zone technology in mobile phones in the processor that are typically the heart of mobile phones or other systems since a long, long time already. But on microcontrollers, it's, it's fairly new, yeah. And uh, just, just one more thing, uh, so, so how, how many people are using the Kyle tools? And which kind of companies? We have, about, uh, we have more than 100,000 active users. So over the years, we have about 300,000 users, but some have dropped. Uh, and today, we have uh, more than 100,000 active users all over the world in all regions of the world.